Beloved, welcome to part three of Romans 911 Project Talks. We are with Arnie Klein from Emmaus Way. We are in the middle of a, a very uh, delicate and significant conversation that I think is so close to the heart of the Father. The Lord has given something to Arnie and Yoni Klein here that is so significant for the uh, the rest of the church to begin to come into this as Arnie's going to talk uh, just introduce uh, uh, the, the ministry focus a little bit tell us about Israel Revealed which by the way beloved is an absolutely fabulous course to take after you've entered into the Romans 911 project experience and you can also as well as finding it on on his website at Mayor's Way you can also find it in the if you scroll down to the partners expression and just click into Israel Revealed it will lead you into all of that information Arnie welcome back brother wow you are just I'm yeah. just uh, you're just touching on something amazing but tell us just for a minute or two you know just yeah to just focus many people know that Israel is important to God Romans 911 is geared to bring people to that. Come on. It's geared to remove the stumbling block. Come on. And to clear the ground to be able to put up the building. Come on. So as we've traveled for years and years like 2 3 decades and shared about Israel and all of the dynamics, we found that mostly people basically love Israel because God loves Israel. But when you try to understand with them why does God love Israel they don't really have the foundational perspectives but just it's more like well God can do anything he wants he decided to love Israel so he loves Israel but that's not just it and in order to be able to to maintain a dynamic of focus you need the why come on after the yes so put together this is, Arnie, that, this is our challenge in these days. Hallelujah. <laughs> so <laughs> tell I us the why. That tell us the why. After, after going repeatedly to the same places over a period of, of 10 years even, I found that people weren't great getting it. And it, it occurred to me that they needed to talk about it in order to get it. It wasn't enough to sit and have somebody give them a 47-point message for two hours and expect that they're going to walk out with all the information. So we put together a course. It's set up as for discussion. That's what it looks like. Israel Revealed. Ten chapters. Small group discussion. You can find it on the website. You can order the books, hard copy. But... It looks at things through God's perspective to understand why he feels yeah. what he does. You see, we're, we're primarily talking about now making a place for the presence of the Lord. As we ended up the last session, the se second part, we came to recognizing that there is no natural solution to the world's situation Come on. and if if you will accept and take as as we do that israel is a prophetic picture of what's going on in the world and in the church as well a microcosm of the macrocosm when we look at what's going on in israel right now it's very obvious there is no solution forgetting about what our prime minister and the government leaders and whoever is saying what they want to do it can't be fixed it can't be solved we're out beyond the ability of man. And the only answer now is we need the abiding presence of God. 
Now I'm not just talking about a spiritual experience for us individually, but that the Lord had asked for back in 97 and confirmed it and confirmed it and confirmed it that he needed to have a place that was actually in the spirit, in the attitude of the tabernacle of David, which was a space, whether it was a dedicated room or it was a, it was a set apart time where he alone was the focus. And all of our attention was directed to, to elements of eternity outside of the temporal realm. If we want to make a place where God's going to be comfortable, you can't do it without understanding God's heart for Israel. It can't be. If God comes to sit down at the table and, and the elements of Israel, as they are in his heart, are not present, yeah. he will not feel completely seen and understood. Yeah. Okay? That's good, Ani. So, there's a lot to say. One other point I want to make out of Romans 11. That's verse that maybe gets skimmed over a little bit. It's in, I think, 16 and 17, where it says, 17, it said, if some of the branches are broken off and you being a wild olive tree were grafted in, now listen, grafted in among them. And with them, Come on. Among became them with. a partaker of the root and fatness of the olive tree. What this is saying is, if you are not joined together with Israel, you will not, we will not be partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree, which is the presence of God. So the fullness okay. of the presence, right? Because God is with us in different measures. You know, when two or three gather, he is with us and you can experience measures um, uh, of the presence of God. But what we're talking about here is the fullness that he is now needing to lead us into, right? In these last days, we're going to be hot or not. So we're really talking about the fullness of his presence that he's beckoning us into. Coming in now with the mindset of the absolute dire critical need for God to have a dwelling place. Now we see this in Psalm 132 that this was David's heart where he said, I'm not going to give sleep to my eyelids. I'm not going to go to my house. I'm not going to go to my bed until I find a dwelling place for the Lord. Now we have these two dynamics. The one is God's heart, but the other is the strategic element that when God comes, you know, and this is going to have an effect on, on the intercessory movement a little bit, because intercession is, as we understand it in these days, it has been, and always is, focused on specific dynamics. But the spiritual dynamics and the complexity of what's going on right now is impossible to understand. It's impossible to lay hold of, to understand the fullness of what yeah. God is doing as we're seeing these workings and these explosions and things happening. But when God's presence comes, you know, I could call what we're looking toward is intercessory worship. Understanding that worship, which is where we divest ourselves of ourselves and make a place for the presence of God, that his presence mm. intercedes. What does that mean? His presence scatters the darkness. Well, that's what intercession's for, isn't it? Come on. It's to scatter the darkness. It's to bring the light. Well, when he's able to come, who is the light? All of that happens. Now mm. we've hit a point where, see, in the past, things worked that won't work anymore because we're dealing with a different dimension level of spiritual principalities that we can't engage with. We don't have the unity. We don't have the ability. 
This is what he's given us to understand going back almost 30 years. Yeah. And where we come to, <clears throat> you know, at one point we were thinking of bringing people to Israel <clears throat> to worship in Israel, because when people will worship in Israel, it'll change the atmosphere over Israel. But you can't get enough people here to do that sufficiently to the kind of change that needs to happen over the atmosphere. So came this understanding. And we first started thinking of the dynamics of what an embassy is. So an embassy in another country is like the land of the country that it represents. It's related to like the American embassy in Israel. When you walk into it, you're in America. And it's governed by the laws of America. So we were kind of thinking of that idea. Hmm. And then thinking about Zion and what Zion is. Because David looked for the dwelling place for God in Zion. And Zion, of course, is another name for Israel. But the word Zion in Hebrew, <clears throat> the root of it means dry and parched. That God has chosen for himself a land that doesn't have the mountains of Switzerland or the forests of Germany or the rivers of Africa or the whatever of Hawaii. <clears throat> it's desert. He's chosen essentially a cursed place because it was Canaan's land and Canaan, Canaan was the cursed grandson of Noah. So he's chosen a cursed desert to be his land and dwelling place. Why did he do that? Going back to Isaiah 62 where it says, he will not rest in Jerusalem as a praise in the earth. What will make Jerusalem a praise in the earth? The presence of God. The only thing that Israel has to offer as a people and a land is the presence of God. And he chose a place. I mean, this is the story of Yeshua. A root out of dry ground. It says it that he wasn't anyone that anyone would look at to desire. It was by design that the beauty would be the presence. So <clears throat> we thought this. We're stepping out of time and space, right? We understand this simply with prayer and intercession is that you pray here, intercede here, and something else happens somewhere else, not even at the same time, in three weeks from now, in a month from now, in a year from now. So we're stepping out of time and space, and we're considering worship in the same dimension or extra dimensionality as we do think about prayer. And say, <clears throat> so imagine now people gathering outside of Israel. Or inside. One, in, inside is not the complicated picture to look at. Because inside of Israel, as you worship here, you change the atmosphere. It's right here. But we're talking about, you're not going to get 100 million people coming to Israel. The whole focus of the demonic kingdom is here. The command and control center for the demonic realm is in the second heaven over Israel. Because this is the place where the devil fears the most. And logically, because it's the place of his greatest vulnerability and weakness, he's going to bring his greatest forces here. So in the second heaven above Israel is the chief demonic princes that govern everything that happens all around the world. So if you can engage them, if you can pierce them, if you can bring worship into the dimension where they are, it's going to set a, a repercussion around the world, according to the scriptures, striking the shepherd, the sheep are scattered. When you hit the chiefs of the demonic princes, all of the sheep are scattered, all of the, the demonic principalities are scattered, but you can't get that many people in Israel. It started with COVID and then it went to the war and you can't even get the normal people that we're able to have here. So, this is what we've been shown. When people gather in this atmosphere, in this spirit, to minister to the Lord, outside of the dimension of anything temporal, with the awareness that God longs for a dwelling place in Zion, as being a motivating dynamic of their heart, they create the atmosphere of Zion. The atmosphere of Zion, the dry parched place, is you don't come with anything. You come empty, 
without your abilities, desires, needs, nothing, and say, I am here. If you want me to sit here for two hours quiet, I'll sit here. If you want to inspire me for anything, you do that. You create the atmosphere of spiritual Zion, of the meaning of Zion, with the understanding of longing to see that which you've created there manifest in Israel, which is what happens when you intercede, which is what happens when you pray. You, you release something in a place that it would land up in Africa, in Indonesia, in New York. And you're doing this with your worship now that your worship would land in Israel. And it will change the atmosphere over Israel. So where we're launching right now is the development, the, the formation of outposts, of Zion and bringing this perspective come on come on go globally which will be a, a framework that can gather an unlimited number of people with the same focus yeah. for purposes of making a dwelling place for God in Zion so so beloved we are talking here Arnie is talking about intercessory worship he's talking about it's a new place for us to learn and to discover, but it's a place that will invoke, invite the presence of God, which we are so desperate for. Second to that is without the connection to Israel, without get, getting rid of the stuff that the enemy has put in the way that we lay out in the Romans 911 project and is uh, Arnie touches on it, is Israel revealed. We need to pray and think and dwell on both of these focuses. So, so Arnie, let me ask you this. You, you've laid this out beautifully for us today. You were beginning to touch on more practical elements. How, how, how do we, this is a, a, a major piece of reform for the body in preparation for for God's end time plans. So how do we prioritize this when you think of regular church service and, and the way that most of us connect to the Lord? Uh, can you speak to us, uh, uh, you know, some yeah. practical elements here? Yeah, it's it's something added. You know, just just for, 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 for simplicity's sake, we're not looking to, to change anything anywhere. We can talk about what a new wine scheme will look like and the changes, but that's not the point. From the beginning, God was saying, this is missing. There's a piece missing. Add the piece. What's the piece? The piece is coming to God with no agenda, with no desires, without need. As though we were in eternity where everything is done. We're stepping into our sealed room with the world completely outside, with God sitting in the room. This is our perspective. So in a sense, it's it's kind of like we're in the Holy of Holies. But exactly. also, but also, let's talk for a moment, Arnie. We we have to have clean heart, clean hands and, and a sure. pure heart. We that the, there's no place for uh, Lucy Goosey Grace here. I mean, we need the fear of the Lord to to uh, focus our hearts. And you know, th there's a th there's stepping stones into this as far as preparation, even even for us to to you know as as believers, let's, you know, to let's, walk. Let's in. make it very simple. Yeah, go ahead. Let's 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 make the imagery very very simple. Everything that's in us before the Lord is on a table. It's in the room. It's not hidden. So if we have held something in our heart that's contrary to the nature of God. Now, none of us are perfect, but we're talking about the things we're aware of. Beloved, we the are broken God vessels. We are broken vessels, but God is calling us 
into a commitment and a dedication into a place of holiness and purity that must lay the foundation for this coming restoration. You know, it's it, it's it's kind of like the thing that I shared when I was telling the testimony when the Lord came to me and he said, this is the love I have for you to dwell in, but you have to give yourself to me to have it. And I understood at that point that it was a matter of doing everything he said forever without any question. It was a matter of, and transferring it into this moment of holiness, it was a matter of saying, I want every single thing of darkness out of my life. And of course, there are things I don't know. So I'm inviting you. Come on. Open invitation to show me. Because it's the problem is, is when we hide it. This is the, the, the shame of our nakedness when Adam and Eve tried to cover themselves with something that couldn't be covered. So when we're not walking in that, when we're walking in transparency and saying, here, I'm an open book, take a look, anything you see, that if we have that attitude before the Lord, He's comfortable with these incompleted, imperfect beings because all of that's covered by the blood. Because he says this in, um, he says, if you walk in the light in 1 John, he says, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, that's an attitude. You have fellowship with one another and the blood of Yeshua covers you from all sin. So if we come with the attitude to be transparent, the blood covers everything we don't see. Amen. So, of course, we're looking to make, you know, we understand this on a personal level, on an individual level. You talk about the kind of thing that we're talking about in, the, in these gatherings. It, it, it sounds a little bit like a quiet time with the Lord, private time with the Lord. Like if you're sitting with God and you read a scripture, you don't tell him what the chapter and verse is, right? But what he's saying here is he wants the dwelling place, corporate dwelling place, which requires us to be together with other people. And this is this article. I'm going to say this is key to read to understand the whole thing, along with God together in the Preparing the Way of the Lord booklet that you'll find on the Emmaus Way website. Alone with God together, we enter in together as though we were the only one in the room, but we're aware of other people in the room, so it has a certain dimension to it. It magnifies. I mean, God is with us in a way with others that he's not with us when we're by ourselves. And we say that right now, this goes back to 97, so we're talking 27 years ago. And actually, this whole principle that you'll read in this article, it came in 1990. So this is, you know, 30 four years ago, the Lord showed us about making a place for him like that. And now is the time where it's not just a good idea. It's not just a nice thing, but it's of critical importance for us to be able to make it through the days that are ahead and have the extra oil. That extra oil doesn't come from come coming to God when you need something from Him. It comes from coming to God when we're not asking anything from Him, but where there's just to be with Him. Because once the need hits, it's too late. Just like the five virgins. When the master came, when the bridegroom came, it was too late. Well, but Andy, to Andy, let me ask you a question then. Where, where does confession come in here? I mean, we're not just talking outward sins. We're, we're also talking about the thoughts that that we so often have to deal with that, that lead us astray. So where, where does that come in to connected to this place of of just yielding? Well, again, it's walking in. It's, which, it's when God reveals something, we acknowledge it. We, we confess it. So that there is a response. I mean, right. I, I was a little unclear about about, about the just, just being still with, with, with just coming to the Lord with, with nothing before him. Okay. So, so when, when he stirs us, we, he, he leads us into a place of confession and repentance. And, right? You know, when, when we you mentioned the 10 days, so the 10-day gatherings that we have are... 10 days of like 10 people coming together with no agenda whatsoever. 
what we tell is an application and, and questions that if you're struggling with stuff in your life, don't come. You can't, you got to be able to give yourself to God. But you got to be able to give yourself as a clean sacrifice. But the measure of cleanliness is determined by what he's shown us. Amen. So that we have to be walking in transparency according to whatever God has shown us about our lives and confessed and dealt with it to the degree that we're able. Before you come in, see, the whole 24-7 movement, I'm sure, in certain places, it's gotten to the point where and unfortunately, this is what is is coming out with what's happened in the in, in Kansas City. Is it's not just about keeping the music going for twenty four seven. It's not just about having an action going for twenty four seven. It's having a space that's prepared for the Lord twenty four seven. You see, God said to us when we asked Him, when I mentioned this in another in, in our other moment, to say, "Do you want this twenty four seven? And He basically said, "Keep tem everything temporal out of the room." And I can be there. Keep everything temporal out of the room. And I can inhabit it. So, unconfessed sin, hidden darkness, is of the temporal world. And God says, if, if you are hiding something in your heart, I'm not going to be comfortable abiding in the space that you've made for me. So, we have to come in with, with the right heart. With Arts. the right heart. So, yeah. so, so, Arnie, with where the, what, let's end with this, and then I'm going to invite you to lead us uh, in, in prayer. Um, with where the church is right now, or where you see the church in the nations, what, what would you say would need to be the greatest ad adjustments and modifications? Uh, setting aside we we already acknowledge that there must be a reconnection and a realignment and a uh, in the one you man with jews and gentiles coming back together and supporting israel you know in the heart as partnership uh, but but pushing that aside for the moment and addressing you know this this intercessory worship i love that name by the way i love that name it's terrific um how do we need to think about changing to, to be able to, to, to come into this new, this place that the Father is beckoning us into. Well, we have to understand something about the old place and the new place. And the dynamic is that the old place is not okay, and we have to understand what's not okay about it. And the simplest, most pervasive explanation that I would give, which might require some discussion that we're not going to really go into fully now, but I'll touch a little bit on it, is the fact that God is not effectively the center of the church. If somebody doesn't have a revelation of Israel, God can't be in the center of it because Israel is in the center of God's heart. If we come, and, and we talked about this concerning this prayer leader that you introduced me to, a fellow who is of, a, of an international level dealing with intercessory networks around the world, when I asked him, how many prayer meetings have you been in where before you began to pray about a specific situation, you asked the Lord how it looked to him and what he was doing? And the brother responded, with a zero. Wow. Understanding what I'm saying. Yeah. That what he's saying is we are coming together to change things either in the natural or the spiritual without asking God what he wants us to do. Is that not a kindergarten basic? No brainer? <laughs> Where he says, my ways are not your ways. You don't see from where you're sitting what I see. You don't understand the dimension of all the things that are going on. Well, we say we believe the scripture, but we don't believe that word because we go and pray without asking him. And the bottom line, and, and you know, we can we can look at this, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that are watching this that are going to relate to the fact of 
how churches are run and how things are pyramidical and how things are top down and how things are humanist humanistic and Greek oriented that is so woven is that it can't be fixed. It's a building that can't be renovated, but it's got to be torn down. Torn down and rebuilt. And rebuilt Come with on. God Come art, on. and perspectives and priorities from an eternal perspective. Yeah. Beloved, that is where Father, that is where Yeshua, that is where Holy Spirit is leading us. We must restore, reform, and to do that, we have to rebuild. Arnie, we've got a few minutes left. Um, would you please lead us, yeah. uh, lead yeah. us into a place of prayer as we begin to close this session? And I just want to say, brother, thank you so much for sharing your My heart pleasure. with us. And we love yeah, you dearly, and, and we're looking yeah. forward to spending time with you in the future. Amen. Well, Father, my prayer, <clears throat> from a place of just extraordinary thanksgiving for what you've shown about your heart and your vulnerability and how you care and how you feel and how going back decades, Lord, you... You planted that inside of me, even beyond my feelings and mind, that it would be the driving motivation of my whole life. Come on. And I pray for everyone listening to these words that you would do for them sure. that, that same thing. Come on. Beyond feeling, beyond understanding even to a certain degree, that every single person would never forget that you are a person and you're touched by all of our, our, our infirmities. I mean, you say that in all of our feelings and that would lead us to look at all that we're doing individually, corporately in light of the simple question, how does God feel about this? And what does God think? Yes. And then I pray, Father, that this understanding, perception, revelation of where we are in the world would also land. To realize that you are, I mean, we say this all the time, that you are our only hope and it's all about you. But now we're in a critical place where the things that we've done don't work anymore. Where we can't engage with the situations that are rampaging through the world and only you can do that. Thank you. To the end, that people would make the necessary sacrifices of time and energy to give you now dwelling places all across the globe where the spirit that's there is like what was in the Holy of Holies and the Tabernacle of David. Because where you can abide like that, it will change the atmosphere and actually bring to those who sit in that space all that's written in Psalm 91 that is conditional to the first verse that says, he who dwells in the secret place. To recognize what this is for your heart, to recognize what it is strategically, and to see what it is for us personally, Lord. May those things, things be imparted by your Holy Spirit to every person that has ears to hear and a heart to understand. For the glory of your name. Yes, Father. Amen. Amen. Beloved, I wonder what would happen to all of us in the body of Messiah, in the church, in the messianic body, if every day we asked the Father <clears throat> how he feels and thinks about what we're doing personally 
and also corporately. Let me put one more thing that I that, that I can't avoid. The Go practical ahead. dynamic. Two hours a week. One hour a week even. Okay. Yeshua said, will you not watch with me for one hour? Take this for a scriptural basis, if you will. He asked them to watch with him for an hour. I'd say do two is a minimum. But if you can't do two, do one. And he had three of them sitting there. When he asked them to watch with him in the midst of this moment, and we're comforting God's heart in this moment, as we sit there, he wasn't asking them to pray. He didn't want them to do anything, but just to be there with him. And as you will gather together with a minimum of three people, according to what we saw in scripture, whether there's music, whether there's not music, it doesn't matter. But go ahead and read that article and it'll unfold it to you. And you'll see our website and our contact information. And if you've got questions, you want to follow this up, you can figure out how to find us. Yeah, and Arnie, we'll, uh, we'll post that article uh, in the Recom website as well. Thanks so much Good. for being with us. We love you. And continue love you to too, pray buddy. for your ministry. Lots of love, Likewise. Arnie. Beloved, Shalom. blessings to you. May the God of Israel richly bless you. Lots of love in Yeshua. Now more than ever before, there is a great need to bring this reconnection message forth, to bring it before the ecclesia in Israel and the church in the nations, to make the appropriate adjustments and modifications to move together into God's end time plans. There is a bridge of restoration and reconciliation of love and unity for us to cross at this time, to reunite the family of God to fulfill Yeshua's heart cry of John 17. There is a pathway of realignment between the church and the remnant of Israel that will open the door to the greater glory being poured out by the Father. This reconnection in his ecclesia, his holy church, will draw the body into the greatest battles ever for the kingdom of God. They will release the last great harvest upon the earth bring about Israel's salvation and prepare us for the Lord's return. But this reconnection message is totally new to all believers, both Jews and Gentiles alike. It has been concealed during the church age and is just now coming to light in the mystery to restore Israel to the ecclesia, to the church, as Israel's awakening comes full circle. Plus, there are divisions and obstacles that need removing from all believers that prevent many of us from seeing and understanding the Father's heart for his family to be one. In this light, full revelation of the Israel peace comes only through spiritual unveiling to those who earnestly seek him. This is why this message is not coming from the church at large at first, but instead to a remnant who are closer to the heart of God. There is a strategy here from heaven that is fully unpacked in the Romans 911 project to increase knowledge and revelation of those who are beginning to receive this reconciliation and then to raise up an army of intercessors, watchmen on Jerusalem's wall to help bring it forth. With your help over these next two to three years, Reconnecting Ministries will bring this message to the forefront of the church and messianic bodies to awaken the ecclesia to embrace these end time reforms that will revitalize the church. The Romans 911 message will be trumpeted to the church at large to lay before them God's plans and pathway for the last great awakening, which require greater love and reconciliation in his family to cause the church to arise out of the darkness, fulfill its destiny on the earth, and to prepare the bride for Jesus' return. Coupled with these study guide teachings, Reconnecting Ministries will promote the Romans 911 Project message through a media focus, through a webinar and podcast series with Charisma Magazine, and through TV and radio. We will also promote specific interviews with leaders from both the church and messianic communities who have opened the doors to this restoration, delivering the message to the threshold of the church. 
But we can't do this without you and without financial support from the remnant who are receiving this revelation from the Lord to help awaken the balance of the church. The Romans 911 project is one of the most significant messages of our day and has been hidden in the mystery to reawaken Israel and is only now coming to light. This is why we need your help and your prayers to support this Romans 911 project message, to give life to it, to speak into and strengthen this message. With this in mind, we have created the Give Chai campaign to help fund the message. There is a Hebrew word called Chai, which means life. Numerically, the Hebrew letters that make up the Chai add up to the number 18. For this, 18 is a spiritual number in Judaism, and many Jewish people give gifts of money in multiples of 18 as a result. In this light, would you pray to help us to promote this message and these teachings? Would you pray to become one of our monthly ministry partners and give chai to the reconnection?